Hello everyone, it's me, Sheppy, back at it again with the live 2D tutorials. It feels like forever, but listen, I've been a busy, busy sheep. <laughs> anyway, uh, the thing I wanted to talk about today is mouth glue. I learned about this technique from a person that I learned a lot of my techniques from, someone called Hachachi. I'll put up a clip of his stream here. And I like watching his streams to learn a lot of uh, techniques and stuff. And when I was watching his stream one time, I noticed that he was using glue in order to connect the um, mouth line art with the mouth skin color layer. And I was like, well, why, why, why would you do that? I, at first, I didn't understand like the nece necessity of doing that exactly, but when I thought about it a bit more, it made more sense. So I'd like to just talk about that a bit today. <laughs> okay, so we're in Live 2D right now, and this is my current model that I drew and stuff. So <laughs> I hope you like it. Um, so. I just want to put a disclaimer, I haven't actually finished this model, so there are parts that I need to tweak and whatever, but that's not, that's not the point today. Um, the point is looking at the mouth. I have to say, this mesh is scary. I'm sorry about that. I did a lot of points here because I was just afraid of like the, the line art going kind of wonky and stuff, but you don't have to do this many points in order to do a mouth, essentially. It's just the way I did it specifically for this model, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But here we have the glue. So the glue is connecting the line art, so this dark brown line, to the skin area, which this skin area is basically what is um, covering the back of the mouth. So if I didn't have this here, you'll be able to see the back of the mouth kind of like, give me a second, kind of like this. So by using the skin layer, we can cover the back of the mouth and so it doesn't look really weird. <laughs> and the reason I've noticed that you can use glue is because in, in my case especially, not everyone does this, but some characters you'll want to have a lipstick, like this lip color I have here. Now the problem when it comes to lipstick, if you were to have all the line art and the, the skin color and the lipstick, all on one layer together, the lipstick can get really, really warped easily. And it's hard to sort of control that cleanly. And it's not as if it's impossible to um, control. This one, um, it's all on one layer. And if we look at the mouth forms, you can see that I tried my best to... Con Just let me get this out of the way. Uh, so you can see it better. You, you can see that I tried my best to sort of control the the bottom lip, but it warps and distorts itself quite a lot. But yeah, the the highlight kind of looks weird when it's it distorting itself. And so we can avoid that problem by using it on a separate layer. But then the problem is when you have it on a separate layer... Let me quickly unfix this. Uh, I'll take off the clipping ID. If we take that off and press enter... You can see that it's it can be really hard when you have the lipstick on a separate layer to keep it outside of the boundary of the mouth back so that it's not overlapping here and it doesn't look really weird. So what we want to do is clip it to the skin, which most of the time isn't a problem, but it becomes sort of a problem that you don't if you're if your skin like the skin layer is on the same layer as your line art you can't clip the lipstick to the line art otherwise it will cover the line art <laughs> I don't have a good visualization of this but you don't want this to be on top of the line art you want it to look underneath and so that's why we want to separate the the skin color layer to the line art layer so we can clip this lipstick exclusively to the skin layer I hope that kind of makes sense into what I'm saying, but <laughs> yeah. So in general, like this wouldn't be a too big of a problem if you had this on a multiply layer. Cause if you had it on a multiply layer, you could just clip it to the, the skin, the combined skin and line art layer, and it won't really affect the line art too much. But then the problem becomes 
for example, myself, I don't have a black line art here. It's a dark brown. So if I was to make this lipstick layer, like multiply, let me see if I can quickly show you. If I was to make this a multiply layer and take off the, oh, take off the clipping ID real quick and then put it on top of this. It's, it's very subtle, but if I make this a multiply layer over my line art, it'll change the color of the line art. It's a little bit hard to see, and it would depend on the lip color and the line art color, but even these small details can be enough for you to be like, I don't want that. So that's the reason number one why we want to clip the lipstick layer onto the skin color layer. So we just don't have the interference with the line art layer in general. The second reason is that, for example, where it's all connected here, it's not only the lipstick area that gets warped, but the line art as well can get warped when it's connected to the skin color. And to avoid that warping and just have everything separated, um, this will just make it look cleaner in general, I find. So it's mainly a personal preference. You don't necessarily need to do your mouth like this, especially if you don't have lipstick. It's just like adding an option. <laughs> and I don't actually think this technique is too hard to do in general. It's just learning how to do it. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of show what we do. Okay, okay, so I have a fresh model here real quick. Um, this is a model I'm working on. I haven't finished it yet, but I have finished like the mouth layers, so we can work with it for now. So quickly, first the thing you want to do with your mouth uh, is get like all the teeth, tongue layers and clip it to the mouth back so we'll clip that real quick um so you can select all of these together and then paste it into the clipping id press enter and it'll all do it simultaneously so you don't have to do it one by one <laughs> and then doo -doo -doo -doo, we need to make the mesh for uh pretty much everything so when it comes to the mouth i don't particularly like using the auto mesh generator when, when i use like clothes and stuff i will actually use the automatic mesh generator a lot and then adjust it when needed because um overall the automatic one isn't too bad it's just more when you get to the face area you want it to be more detailed because this is the area that basically matters the most on a vtuber model like ev everything is in the face basically i mean you know that we got the boobies or whatever as well but the face is really where the magic happens you know so quickly just um do the mesh for this oh uh, why aren't you getting oh wait i was i always forget the shortcuts <laughs> I always forget the shortcuts um, in Live 2D after I've been using Clip Studio because, you know, it's just like slightly different. So you could do this completely by hand like this, but when it comes to line art that's sort of just a basic line like this, I like to use this, what is it called, stroke mesh mapping. And then first uh, thing I do is press OK because I like to reflect the mesh. So I want to make it as symmetrical as possible when it comes to this mouth line art. So you have to go out of the mesh editor, select it and then copy it. Go back in, select the original, reflect it horizontally and then paste back in the original one. And you'll you, you'll have a symmetrical mesh. Um, this is this is how I, we do it now i i'm not sure i think live 2d is adding an asymmetry feature but i don't think they've added it in yet so we're just going to show model image um so we can see where we need to line everything up essentially oh i might do this with two points
So that should be good for our top line art. So once you have this mesh, I'm just going to hide the ones in the back real quick so we can see what we're working with more or less here. And then I'll hide the bottom stuff as well. Okay. So once you have the line art for the... Uh, the mesh for the line art, right? You can copy this. Remember, whenever you want to copy mesh in order to edit it later, you have to copy it outside the editor or else it won't work. This took me a long time to figure out. You copy it and then we go to the skin layer, go to edit, delete all these points, and then paste. And this is the exact same mesh in the same position as the line art. So this will make gluing a lot easier because the way that glue works is that it will find the similar mesh points and stick those points together. So if you have it exactly the same, it's just gonna work a lot easier. And where it gets to here, it doesn't matter too much how you do this. This is just like somewhat generically how I would do it. And I auto connect and then done. And then you need to select them both together. So once you have them both selected, you want to go into the mesh editor and then select these guys. While there's the layers are together, you can either click this glue bind button here, but I normally use control G as the shortcut because I sometimes forget where this button is because it, it, it doesn't have an icon. <laughs> I like, I work with icons, you know, so control G is pretty easy to remember as a default shortcut, you know, it's a G for glue. And you have them now glued, but you do need to then adjust it a little bit. So we click on the glue and then Let's just try it a little here. I'll make it all red. Um, sometimes I have to play with it. Okay, so I I've, I've did the glue where I made it all red. Uh, you might want to have the weight up to 100% here. And it's all red here. And I have put deform pass points on the skin layer. I put some on the lips layer just to show you. If I try and control it now, when it's glued like this, it won't move. Like, I'm dragging all over. The line art won't move at all. Uh, but if you have the deformed past points on the skin layer, you can see that they're moving in tandem. Um, there's basically no problem here in the way that they're moving. There's no sort of like, there's the distortion of the mesh here, but you can see that it's not blending in with the color of the skin together. And then we can get, this is the lipstick layer. If we copy the skin layer and make that the clipping ID for the lipstick, when we move this around, doopy doo -boo -boo, oh, you can see that the lipstick layer will only stay confined into the skin layer. And I guess that's it, basically. So the, the overall thing is make the mesh for the line art, copy that mesh and put it on the skin layer, and then make sure you have this clipped to your skin layer and the glue is all red. And you should be able to control it from the skin layer itself. And it moves really nicely, in my opinion, in this way. So it's just one way to sort of level up your live 2D experience, I guess. <laughs> it's It just makes the lip layers a little bit easier to work with. And for example, another thing is if you were to want to have like a expression toggle to change the color of the lips, you would definitely need it to be on a clipped layer rather than the same color as the skin layer. Because if you were to have it as the same color as the skin layer, you there is just too many variables where this, the skin color might change. And so just having it clipped to the skin color itself is the easiest way to work in my opinion. And this, like, it doesn't take too long to do the glue. It's not hard. You don't really have to even know how glue works. 
and you can do it. So yeah, definitely try it out. If you have any problems, let me know. And if there's anything else you guys want me to make a tutorial about in the future, I just comment down below and I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so thank you for watching. See y'all later. Bye!